Hello class, uh, we're going to work on chapter 21 which is leases. So leases uh, is in exam 7. Now exam 7 is only chapter 20 which is pensions and 21 which is leases. These two chapters are, are pretty difficult and uh, they're complex and uh, you haven't really seen them before in any other previous accounting class. So that's why we're doing just two for exam 7. Alright, so let's on this video we're going to do um, terms and we'll do problems in the next video. Alright, so leases. Leases. Many companies instead of purchasing they, they'll lease property rather than, than buying and taking out the debt. Now generally this is a form of off balance sheet financing. If I could spell balance sheet that would be awesome. So this is off balance sheet financing because what you're trying to do is you're trying to avoid having debt, extra debt, on your balance sheet. Alright, so leasing gives you some financial advantages, some operating advantages, risk advantages, and it is apparently the fastest growing form of capital investment. Now the old FASB standard used to uh, break everything down into operating leases which was just look like a rental so no asset no liability or capital lease which you recorded a, an asset and a liability there is a new standard so the FASB new standard is essentially all the companies are going to have to report both assets and liabilities for virtually all lease arrangements now this is long-term lease arrangements greater than one year. Less than one year it would not be this way. That means a lot of companies are going to now have much more assets and liabilities related to leasing uh, on their balance sheets. All right, what's a lease? A lease is just a contractual agreement between the lessor and the lessee for property for a specified time the lessee makes the rental payments to the lessor over the lease term. Now once again FASB requires companies to capitalize all long-term leases. So what's the asset? The asset is the right to use the property and what's the liability? The lessee's commitment to make payments under the lease is the liability. So a couple of terms. Lessor owns the property and receives the rent payments what advantage is it to the lessor? Now, the lessor could be a financing company, could be a bank, could be another uh, type of investment company possibly, or it could be a manufacturer of maybe heavy equipment. So the advantage to the lessor would be, hey, you, you get um, profitable interest margins, you may spur sales, you increase sales, especially if you're a um, heavy equipment manufacturer like Caterpillar or John Deere or something like that, then you help to increase sales. Uh, essentially, it's a different financing arrangement than a, a sale. You get tax benefits, and then you could get a return of high residual value if you have assets that have a long life. Um, you might get those back, and they still have lots of value left. The lessee is the party that uses the property and pays the rent payments. There's advantages to the lessee. There could be 100% financing at fixed rates. You don't have all your money tied in um, at one point, so that's less costly possibly. Protection against obsolescence. You have flexibility. Less costly financing it might be if you buy directly from the company and they're willing to give you favorable lease terms because then they might in two years uh, help to get you into a new piece of equipment and there's tax advantages if you're the lessee. Uh, one example is uh, I know a lot of churches now do not own uh, their church buses and so they would just lease and that way another company and they they would handle all the care and maintenance of those church buses. Same thing a lot of airlines generally would uh, lease their airlines on, a, on airplanes on a long-term basis and so Delta may not actually technically own their planes. They're all through a lease agreement uh, through some kind of financing company. All right, so leasing accounting. And for the lessee here, we have operating lease. Operating lease, 
we're going to capitalize all the leased assets and liabilities. And the lessee measures interest expense using an effective interest method that we already know how to do. And the lessee amortizes the right of use asset. And what they do is they smooth it where the total lease expense is the same each period. Now, another way to think about operating lease, operating lease is deemed to be a purchase of the right of use of the asset, where a finance lease looks more like a sale, so it's a purchase of the control of the asset. So here's what happens. The lease expense under operating lease is going to be the same each period. Now, if it's a, if it's a finance lease, once again, we'll capitalize all leased assets and liabilities. We're going to have interest expense using effective interest method. We'll record amortization expense usually on straight line basis. So the total lease expense is going to be different each year. Now, to the rules are for a finance lease. There are uh, one criteria, uh, one uh, condition, I guess, and then five criteria. It's got to be non-cancelable, can't be canceled, and then one through five. It transfers ownership at the end of the lease. It contains a bargain purchase option. A bargain purchase option would be something like, well, it's technically a lease, but at the end, if you'll just pay one dollar, then it becomes uh, your asset. Well, that really looks like a purchase. If the lease term is equal to 75% or more of the estimated economic life, so it's a 10-year asset and you lease it for seven years, it doesn't hit this 75%. Um, if you lease it for eight years, then it's 80% of the 10 years, so therefore you have met that condition. You just have to meet one of the five if it is non-cancelable. Uh, I don't think I'm saying that word correctly. Uh, the present value of the lease payments equals or exceeds 90% of the fair value of the lease property. We take the present value of all the future payments. If it's 90% uh, or more of the fair value, then this looks like a purchase rather than a lease. And the underlying asset is so specialized, there's no alternative use. It's specifically designed for the lessee. Then you have essentially purchased the asset and you have to uh, account for it like a finance lease. Now, here's the deal. This amortization expense is instead of depreciation expense. If you buy equipment, then you have an asset and maybe a liability, right? And uh, you would have depreciation. But if you finance it through a finance lease, then you have amortization expense. You still have the asset, and it's uh, we'll show you how that works here in a little bit. But you have the asset and you have the liability, but instead of depreciation, you have amortization. So you, you're in the same uh, situation you would be if you just said it's a, it's a financing agreement. It's a purchase with debt. All right, let's keep going. Now, how do we calculate this present value? We use the lease payments using the present value of the lease payments using the implicit interest rate. Built in, there may be an implicit interest rate, or we may know it. Or we could use, if we don't know this, we use uh, the incremental borrowing rate for the, the lessee. All right. Let's look at finance leases first. The lessee would debit right-of-use asset and credit lease liability. The very first payment, we're going to debit... Um, lease liability we credit cash at the end of the year we'll have interest expense and lease liability and then we amortize over time amortization expense and credit right of use asset we don't have any accumulated amortization i'm just trying to get this in into your notes so that way when we do problems you'll be in better shape now if it's the lessor then sometimes we call this the finance lease for lessor is we call this a sales type lease, which means it looks like a sale. Let's say we had inventory. We're John Deere and we sell big harvesters that cost $200,000. Um, and so we're selling this. We'll sell it to you, but if you want to lease it, we'll lease it to you. We, we don't mind either way. And so this becomes a, looks like a sale. And so 
For the lessor, we basically call it operating or sales type lease. The finance lease is a sales type lease. So what's unusual about a sales type lease is you set up lease receivable, credit to sales, and then you need to debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory. Remember, there's two entries when we make a sale. Well, we're making a sale, it's just called a lease. End of the year, we debit lease receivable and credit interest revenue along the way. All right, if it's operating, then we've got some other rules here. Um, I'm just trying to get this into your notes. I'm not going to read it all, but this way you have it kind of in an organized way. Um, and so operating lease, the way to do it is just work problems for the lessee and then for the lessor. And so here, there's for the uh, lessor, there's not that uh, built-in cost of goods sold, gross profit um, kind of idea. Now, once again, residual values. Let's talk about some other issues. Residual values. Hey, I'm not going to read these to you. Here are the rules. If we get to residual values, we're not going to do much with residual values. There might be it might be a, a homework problem that re relates to that. So here it all is in one place. If that's helpful. A couple other things you need to know. Executory cost. Now this this I don't know why it's called this, but all this means is normal expenses associated with owning a leased asset such as property insurance, property taxes, that's called executory cost and that's paid by the lessee, the, the party that uh, rents the property. Now there's an arrangement, this is in the appendix, these couple of things. We're not going to do any problems with that but I want you to know what these are just um, for your general business knowledge here. A sale and lease back. Um, let me jump down to the bottom here. What happens a lot of times is, say Walmart would buy land and they'd build a super center and then immediately they sell the land and the building and they turn around and lease it from the new owner. Well, Walmart says, look, we don't want to tie up our investments in real estate and in buildings. We want it to be an inventory, right? And we want to build um, distribution centers and maybe lease those, sell them to somebody else. And somebody else could say, I want to be a real estate investor. I'll buy the Walmart building and um, property and I'll turn around and lease it to Walmart. That's the deal. You know, it's, it's combined. You can't choose to do one and not the other. But they would get uh, steady interest rates and a steady interest margin and they get Walmart that's going to be there for 15 or 20 years. So here's what happens. The company that's the seller transfers the asset to another company, the buyer, and then turns around and leases it, becomes the lessee, and the buyer becomes the lessor. So if Walmart sells, then they don't have to own, have their cash tied up into the building and, and land. They increase their cash, reduce the carrying value of the asset to zero. Uh, they can recognize a gain or loss as appropriate and they recognize the lease portion according to lease accounting rules. All right, the other one is a direct financing lease. When the uh, lessor relinquish, gives up, I'll just say that, gives up control of the asset to the lessee, but there's involvement of a third party. In um, sales type lease relates to profit on the sale, and this is a third party. In a sales type lease, we have a profit, direct financing lease. The profit is deferred and recognized over the life of the lease. So you may, you'll you see maybe that um, that is in the appendix and that's not going to be uh, one of the problems that we do. I just want you to be aware of some of these extra terms so you kind of have a complete picture on, on leases. All right, the next video we'll do some problems and make sure you know how to do everything on, on leases. Thanks.